so let's uh, set up the data logging on the data monster over there. So go to data logging, and select, top right button is the forward one, okay, and then go to select parameters, so down one, and then the top right again. Okay, so this is the list of everything that the gauge is going to log, and then let's set up the logging rate, so go down to that one, and let's max it out at 20 hertz. Okay, so now hold the back button and return to the home screen. Okay, so the shortcut to start data logging is holding that back button again for, uh, to actually hold the down button for two seconds. Okay, so now we just started the log, just log one. Um, while you're driving, say you have like some, you hear a knock or you like um, had some event that you want to mark, uh, hit the bottom right button, the back button, just once. So I'll do a flag. So basically it just puts a marker in the file to show exactly where that event happened. Um, so when you open it up on your computer, you can go back and find it quickly. Right, so any errors you can log. Yeah, so if you like had something or you, something uh, was funny or you had like a overboost condition or something like that, you can just flag it and quickly find it. So let's start a log and take some data as we go around the block here. So on that right gauge on the top screen, what we have is manifold air density. Now, what does the manifold air density show? Okay, so manifold air density is uh, it's kind of like manifold air pressure, except it adds temperature um, to it. So density is the weight of the air in a given volume, so pounds of air per cubic foot. And um, unlike manifold pressure or boost, that just kind of gives you what the pressure of the air is, uh, this is much more accurate and much uh, more powerful because hotter air is less dense and it gives you less oxygen. So. It's a parameter that combines both pressure and temperature into a single measurement that's kind of like the end all for performance. So the goal of any performance upgrade is to increase manifold air density. So how will this help when we upgrade the supercharger to a larger 2.7 liter supercharger? So any, any performance upgrade device, you just want to see a manifold air density increase. So um, the better the supercharger, the more the manifold air density. So. Um, we can also add pressure and temperature sensors at different places. So if you wanted to really isolate the supercharger, uh, we would add sensors uh, in between the supercharger and intercooler, and then take a data set before with the stock supercharger, and then data set after with the new supercharger. And you'll be able to look at the, the additional pressure that that supercharger builds. Um, depending on if the supercharger is more efficient, you should see uh, a temperature decrease in the air um, at the same boost pressure. And so all of this can be evaluated and logged with the iDash. So it's a great um, instrument for kind of seeing what these uh, different performance devices do for your engine. Very nice. It seems like it comes in a lot of useful options and it seems like it definitely has the data that you need, especially when you're upgrading parts and uh, changing out components and such like that. Yeah, so we right now we exclusively use this iDash for everything that we do um, product development here at Banks. So, uh, we used to use uh, you know, Dewey Tron, which is kind of industry standard $60,000 plus um, instrumentation devices. And everything that that could do, we can do on the iDash and do it cheaper, easier, better. Um, so we've kind of fine-tuned this device to um, be professional grade, but we make it available to the average consumer so that they can find out this data and kind of understand better what their engine is doing themselves. Very nice. So it's kind of a nice, nice, easy, convenient package that anyone can use and pretty much have all the data in the world at your fingertips. Yep. Very cool. So let's head up right here, do a loop around. So the gauges are modular. Uh, right now we have two in this system. Um, you can expand that up to four. So each gauge can read up to eight parameters. Uh, we have a ton of different layouts, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, depending on what you want to see at one time, uh, you can add more gauges. All right, let's give it a little bit of boost and see what happens. So I saw it went yellow there. What does that mean? Does that yeah. mean it's over? Yeah, so we have a uh, custom alerts. So any parameter that you can read off the ECU, you can set a high uh, or low alert or both. So we have a default RPM alert on here that kind of we just tripped off. So so you can kind of set your own warnings to kind of remind yourself, hey, not, not too fast, but you can 
enough enough for you. Yeah, and this can uh, save your engine on the track too. So um, you can have like if your engine has a knock output, like uh, I run this on my Mega Squirt Miata, so I can be monitoring knock and. You know, when you're on the racetrack and you're driving fast, you don't want to be looking at your gauge, but as soon as you see that bright warning pop up, you can, you know, be, hey, something's up, you know, I may want to slow down and kind of make, evaluate everything, make sure everything's okay. So will that also be useful, say, in the future, if I want to go E85, uh, will that also be able to monitor everything once, once I switch to an alternative fuel such as E85? Yeah, so it'll read anything that the ECU can read. Um, some ECUs will output like an ethanol percentage parameter. Yeah, just turn right up here. So if yours does that, then you'll be able to see the ethanol percentage in real time. Um, if you have like a knock, um, knock trim percentage or degrees retard, then you can see that and track that as a warning. Does, the, does its job of catching your attention. So the alert will kind of pop up for two seconds, and then what will happen is it'll go to the a little indicator in the top left corner, and then that parameter will blink red and white. So RPM is kind of hard because you can't hold that RPM for very long, but like say your EGT was high, uh, you would see that EGT parameter blinking red and white as kind of like, hey, this is your issue right now. So we also installed the ambient air density sensor, um, also known as the air mouse. So it's a little, um, a little gauge or a little uh, module that just you put up in the grill of your car, and it'll constantly read all of the ambient conditions. So your ambient pressure, your ambient temperature, your relative humidity, and it calculates a lot of interesting stuff like um, ambient air density. It'll calculate your density ratio or density altitude. So, um, which is kind of like an aircraft parameter and common for guys in drag racing. It'll look at like dew point or what's the grains of water in the air right now. So it's raining. So we're going to have a lot of uh, moisture in there and you can kind of log that and um, that comes becomes relevant for um, tuning as well like if you have more moisture in the air it kind of affects right. how knock sensitive your engine is so being able to log what the humidity was uh, especially when you're calibrating and doing dyno pulls it, it's relevant information to kind of compare one data set to another so right now on the gauges we're reading rpm uh, cfm engines so that's the pumping uh, pumping volume of the engine, so it's looking at the displacement times the RPM. Um, we have air fuel ratio, so that's directly from the ECU. You can see both the left and the right bank, as well as what the commanded AFR is from the ECU, as well as we also calculate what the AR AFR error is. So let's show you how far away you are from the commanded. Uh, so if you want to monitor that and see, like if you see over half of um, AFR error, then you might have kind of something out of whack or. I uh, might need to look into something. So it'll help you say like if a knock sensor was going bad or even the oxygen sensor going bad, you would be able to yeah. kind of catch that before it fails and yeah. it leaves you stranded. Exactly. Or like if you have an uh, intake leak or something like that, exhaust leak. Boost leak, so, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Very nice. Then we have manifold air pressure, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're looking at manifold temperature. So this is going to be relevant to the supercharger. Uh, when you upgrade it, if you uh, increase the pressure ratio of the supercharger or um, overdrive it, then uh, you should have an increase in manifold temperature. So based off how efficient the supercharger is, you can use manifold air temperature as a uh, reference point for calibration and tuning to see um, what it's doing. And then the last one is ignition timing, so another useful parameter for uh, calibration work. So this gauge will also do all the diagnostic stuff, so you can go in and um, read your check engine lights um, if you have something and clear them out, as well as it'll take a, a snapshot of what the, um, what the freeze frame data is, so it's very useful for like technicians to record all of the, you know, what the RPM was, what the load was, what the um, manifold pressure was when you tripped that code, so you have a better understanding of what might have caused it. So and that'll be actually useful for our testing because we do a lot of prototype R&D testing. So when we put new parts on, we can monitor everything and it actually records. So our guys can go back and look at the data and say, hey, this is, if something were to go wrong, they yeah. can see exactly what happened and why. Yeah, so you have a snapshot and SD card. So you can actually put that in your computer and open up the file and see the check engine light code along with all of its data associated with it. So, 
So one last little feature. So let's uh, hold the bottom left button to stop that pivot log. And then, so every gauge, even if it's a data monster or not, will have a built-in uh, min-max logging feature. So if you go on the top right button for the menu, and then go to min-max log. So what this is showing is um, it's always running unless you clear it. So even after key cycles, it'll, it'll hold its values from the last key cycle. And everything that you're displaying right now, as, long, as well as stuff that you have in the background alerts, it'll show you what your max and min parameter. So right now we had a max boost air density of 116, so 116% over ambient air density. Um, keep going down, ambient air density boost. Uh, oh, not bad, 9.6 9 9 .6 PSI. So, yeah. Tells show you your max speed. Well, that's helpful for when you go on the track. Yeah. Fuel level. Or if you give the car to your daughter and you come back and it's at 120, then you know. Yeah, well, it's a good thing my son doesn't know how to drive yet, otherwise he might be in trouble. Yeah, so. Uh, one more feature which is worth pointing out. So hit the back button and then from the main menu, um, so we have it set up so you can switch between five different pages. So uh, if you only have, or you can set up each gauge to a unique screen. So if you want one to monitor like all of your pressures, one to monitor all your temperatures, or one for track driving and one for street driving, hold that bottom back, uh, bottom right button there for a couple seconds and I'll switch to page two. So now this is a completely unique page. You can set up um, a different layout, a two gauge, a three gauge, whatever you want with different parameters, and then hold it down again. Now we're at page three. And you can also change the colors for each page as well. That's so very cool. It's a very quick way to be able to add more parameters to the gauge and quickly switch between it. So that's a new feature we just rolled out a couple months ago. That's actually really awesome. It's really helpful because that way you can switch you, you don't have to rely on just one gauge. You can go throughout, you can have a bunch of different stuff recording all at once. Yeah, and we have stuff called, um, a tuner called a Derringer, uh, and that lets you basically have one set up for the Derringer layout so you can control the power level and then switch it to something with eight gauges so that way you can monitor more things. So I'm going to get a Derringer on this thing. Oh, yeah. Wow, you have like five pages. How many pages does this go to? Yeah, it's five. five and then pages, you can disable five. it. So if you only have two that you're actively using, you can disable three, four, five. So that way you can get between Switch one back and two. And forth quicker. Much quicker, yeah. Exactly. Very nice. So yeah, that's the overview of the product. Yeah, this thing is great. I can't wait to actually put it to good use. Yeah, just wait till you add some sensor modules and really unlock all the, the calculations. That yeah, especially once we get that bigger supercharger on there, then it'll really shine. Very cool. Ready.